Hello everyone. Good day. In this video, we are going to see the concepts of pod disruption budgets. Pod disruption budgets is also called as PDBs. If you like this video, please subscribe to VSparks channel and click the bell icon for the latest updates. This is the agenda of this video. We are going to discuss on these topics in this video. Disruptions. Let us start from the scratch by understanding what is disruption. In general, disruption means breaking a running process. With respect to Kubernetes, disruption means to terminate the workloads running in the cluster node if the node fails or upgrades or someone destroys it. Disruptions are classified into two types. They are involuntary disruption and voluntary disruption. Involuntary disruptions are unavoidable and it mainly occurs if there is a hardware failure or software failure in the cluster nodes. Some of the common examples of involuntary disruptions are a hardware failure, a hypervisor failure, a network failure, a cluster admin deletes a node by mistake, not enough resources left on a node that causes pod eviction are some of the examples. On the other hand, voluntary disruptions are man-made and it mainly occurs due to system maintenance, cluster upgrades, OS patching, etc. Some of the examples of the voluntary disruptions are deleting or updating a deployment, directly deleting a pod by accident, draining a node for repair or upgrade, draining a node to scale down the cluster, removing a pod from the node to fit some other pod on that node. These are some of the examples for voluntary disruptions. Let us understand on how to handle these disruptions. Dealing with involuntary disruptions. There are some ways to mitigate the involuntary disruption. Let us see it one by one. First is to ensure the parts or the workloads request the required resources it needs. Resources in the sense it is CPU and memory. This is possible by setting the resource request and limits field in the pod definitions. This is one of the best practice to ensure that the pod gets the required resources from the underlying nodes. If we look at this picture, here pod 1 and pod 2 follows the best practice. Whereas pod 3 is not set with resource request and limits. This is not a best practice. Second method is to replicate your application. Ensure your application workloads are replicated across multiple nodes. With this setup in place, even if one of the replica goes down due to underlying hardware failure, the other two replicas still exist to serve the application. Third method is to replicate the application across racks and zones. With this setup in place, we can see that our application is replicated across multiple data centers, floors and racks. This data center exists in different locations or regions in the world. This setup provides very high availability for our applications. Now let us discuss on how to handle the voluntary disruptions. Kubernetes offers features to help us to run highly available applications even when we introduce frequent voluntary disruptions. One such feature is Pod Disruption Budget or PDB. PDB is a powerful feature for ensuring high availability in a Kubernetes environment and it is strongly recommended in production scenarios. PDBs can be applied to a specific workload such as deployment or stateful set or to a group of workloads using label selector. Once it is applied, when a voluntary disruption occurs, it always ensures to run minimum replicas for your workload. When a disruption occurs, Kubernetes will gracefully evict the parts from the disrupted nodes to maintain the desired number of replicas. PDBs help us to support service level agreement or SLAs without incurring losses for our applications. 
Let us understand these PDBs a bit more with an example. Let us consider a Kubernetes cluster with three worker nodes, that is node 1, node 2 and node 3. Let us consider the cluster is running several applications. Assume an application called application A is provisioned as a deployment which is having three replicas. These replica parts are running in node number 1, node 2 and node 3 as shown in this picture. Apart from this application, assume a standalone part also called as pod X is running in node number 1. This is the initial cluster setup. Now we are going to apply a pod disruption budget to this cluster with a minimum of two replicas all the time. This PDB is also having a label selector called app equals web. So it will take care of the parts which is having a label app equals web. In our case, the parts that belongs to the application A is having the label called app equals web. As per the PDB logic, during voluntary disruptions, it will always ensure a minimum of two parts must be available all the time in this deployment. PDB will not take care of the part X as it is not having the proper label. Now let us introduce voluntary disruptions and observe the part displacements. Let us assume the cluster administrator wants to drain the node number 1 to perform a OS upgrade. This will succeed immediately and the parts in node number 1 will go into terminating state. Now the node number 1 is said to be in quadrant state, which means no pod will be scheduled in node number 1. The deployment notices that one of its pod is terminating. So it creates a replacement pod either in node number 1 or in node number 2. For this demo, assume that it is scheduled in node number 2. Similarly, for pod number X in node number 1, there will be a replacement pod getting started by now. During this time, when an impatient cluster administrator tries to drain node number 2 or node number 3, drain command will be blocked because there will be only two available parts in the deployment and its PDB requires at least two parts to be available always. After some time, parts in node number 1 will be completely terminated. Pod A1 and pod X will be in available state now. Now the cluster administrator tries to evict node number 2. This drain command will try to evict pod A2 and pod A1 in the same way. At this point, pod eviction will be success for pod A2 and the deployment will create a replacement pod for A2. This replacement pod will be available in pending state as there are no available resources to run the pod. But when it tries to evict pod A1, it will be refused because that would leave only one pod for the deployment. So the node 2 is not cordoned now. This proves that the pod disruption budget will protect our workloads by always running the minimum required replicas during the voluntary disruptions. Best practices to be followed while doing the disruptive actions on the cluster. Talk to the application stakeholders and agree a downtime during the upgrades. Fail over to another cluster just like a blue-green deployment model. We need to note few points while following blue-green deployment model. That is, this has no downtime. It is bit costly as we need to run two simultaneous cluster during failover. This will consume more human effort as well. The final advice is we need to write disruption tolerant applications and to use PDBs. This practice also has some points to note. They are no downtime, minimal resource duplication, easy cluster administration, Writing disruption tolerant application is bit tricky. Well, 
that's it for this lecture thank you from bsparks and thank you for watching this video